Hello, welcome to this demo of a piece of equipment I've been using for about the last year or so in my live setup for Mechanical Techno. Uh, it's this thing here, uh, and it also comes with this bit here, and what it is is an optical uh, trigger, an optical sensor. Um, so this is the actual sensor part, if I can get it in focus. Uh, and it's, it emits uh, infrared and picks up infrared as well. And this is the box part here, so it, it goes along the cable, plugs into the box. Uh, it's got two inputs and two outputs. Each of the inputs is one of these um, kind of uh, mini XLR connectors. Uh, and it has each channel has one part on it, one controller. Um, so essentially what it will do is it can tell the difference between uh, whether there's a white part of the record or a black part of the record. So here it's on a black part, it's just a normal record with white stickers on it. And if I look at the box here you can see the lights switched off. Um, move round till we're on the white part and the light is switched on. So all that does from there is to send uh, out of this cable here uh, a control voltage signal 5 volt CV and then I can use that to control any uh, synth or any sort of modular gear which will accept a gate signal such as that uh, and then it will play a note. Um, I don't have any modular gear at all actually um, but uh, what I have been using is this which is the Micro Brute um, which uh, is quite a nice kind of mono synth but it also has a sequencer in it and I'll show you what you can do with that uh, in a few minutes. Um, so the way that the micro brute works uh, you have to kind of go into the settings to tell it how you want it to receive gate input. Um, so with the kind of factory default settings um, it won't work in this way you have to actually go into the program uh, and then you need to change the settings here so that the gate uh, triggers the gate input triggers the sequencer step sequencer rather than just triggering a note. So the way I have it set up in here, uh, if you wanted to play it, I've got the sequencer switched on at the moment, so the sequencer is uh, set to play here. Uh, and if I want it to make a sound now, uh, I would just tap. If I play the keyboard, it's not going to do anything apart from uh, change what note it's currently set to. But if I um, press the tap rest button, that will step it along one step in the sequencer. So that's essentially what the gate is going to do as well. Uh, so if I move round then to where the uh, unit is and where the optical reader is, and uh, turn the record round a little bit, you'll hear that when it gets to the white part of the disc uh, it will also trigger the sound. Um, so as you can see on the record here um, I've got three kind of different tracks so depending on uh, depending on whereabouts the head is if it's, uh, if it's here right near the centre it's just going to get four uh, four hits per cycle. If I move it out a little bit more it's going to hit the first two each time but not the last one on the edge. Um, so I'll get and then if I move it out further so it's right on the edge then I'll, I'll get all three each time. So let's um, stick a beat on. All I've got here is, uh, as I normally use in the setup, it's the Nord drum and I've just got a bass drum and a hi-hat and uh, they're just being hit by these triggers over here um, so I'll just play you, I'll just mute the synth and play you the beat so you can hear what that sounds like just very simple And then at the bottom, as I normally do, where it all kind of started from, the sampling record. So that sounds like this.
Let's change that a little bit so I can hear it a bit more. Just increasing the volume on the mixer a bit. So yeah, let's uh, bring the synth in now. Just again with the volume on the mixer. And again, if I move the tone arm, it'll change to a different uh, part. Slightly out of sync. Move it in a bit. Now, of course, what's great about this is it means that I can make different rhythms just by making different records. And they're, um, they're fairly fast to make. Um, you can use all sorts of patterns or work. Uh, and each of them can have kind of several rhythms on you don't even need to be kind of uh, you know pro proper kind of uh, rhythmical things that can just be anything you want really it even reads kind of different colors so it'll re read this one as well let's stick that one on and see what that sounds like So you might notice it's actually slipping out of sync slightly, um, which does happen. Um, that's because the, the head here actually puts quite a lot of friction on the record. Uh, what I tend to do if, if that's happening too much when I'm recording is to um, stick a bit more weight on top just to kind of uh, give it a bit more pressure. Um, but also what's great about using the uh, micro brute in this way is the thing is here uh, I mean one thing you can do is you, by hitting any note on the keyboard you can change the uh, note that it's playing which is good, it's useful, um, but what you can also do, because I'm actually not triggering the notes, I'm triggering the sequencer, um, I can actually record in um, some different patterns, and the because um, it, it's triggering each step in the sequencer, it will kind of play through the patterns. So I've just set to record mode, play in uh, whatever riff I want. Set back to play. Um, just turn the glide down a bit so it's not kind of sliding around uh, and now that should hopefully that should play those different notes rather than just the one same note Um, then I can transpose that as well if I want to kind of change that to a different place on the keyboard. Um, 
also the micro group has eight different banks of um, sequence of patterns so you can switch between those on the fly. What's happening on this particular one is that um, when I've recorded it, I've put in a few rests as well. So it means that each time it's not hitting it, it's not playing a note every single time necessarily, uh, which I quite like to do because it sort of breaks up the pattern a bit. If I just switch up for one that's a bit more rhythmical, because um, you can also use this to kind of write uh, bass lines that change on a bit more of a progression which is something that I'd really struggled with before like it's fine to be able to do these kind of acidy bass lines and things but um, it's nice so sometimes to be able to change through a few different notes um, so you can do that as well with a sequencer I've discovered um, so again putting a bit more weight on the top um, and then let's uh, change the sample a bit more uh, see what this sounds like. I'm just going to record one single note. So there are four notes playing per cycle, so it's quite easy then if I want to play, uh, get it to cycle through four different sets of four notes. All I do is record four of each. Um, and then it will play those notes in that order, but on the rhythm determined by the pattern on the record. So let's see what that sounds like. Then if I change to a different uh, pattern or the pattern that's got a few more notes in it, it will then cycle through a bit more quickly. So there you go. Um, Big thanks to uh, Tom Richards who designed and built this box for me. Um, check out Tom Richards' work, uh, including the mini ceramics machine that he made fairly recently. Uh, check out his new album actually that's released next week. I'll put a link to details about that in the uh, description below. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers, bye.